Hi everybody, George Zanley here. Today I want to talk about uh, strategy. Um, strategy is basically when you identify your strengths and your weaknesses, your weaknesses, and you leverage one or more strengths in order to overcome uh, your weaknesses. You know, a strength, for example, with Bitcoin Cash is anybody can use it. You know, it's super cheap, it's accessible, right? It's, it's for everybody. A weakness is that, you know, maybe nobody has heard about it, right? And not a lot of people have heard about it. Or another weakness is all the acrimony around um, the 2017 fork has done a lot of damage to us. And so, um, you know, one strategy is that uh, you onboard um, new people who aren't aware of that weakness or aren't aware of that acrimony and you, because, you know, it's, it's so um, inexpensive to do, th to do things on Bitcoin Cash, um, you know, we can onboard a lot of people. And then just by sheer mass, um, you know, we can overcome our weakness, right? Because when you have, if we onboard 100 million people and they're all uh, talking up the benefits of Bitcoin Cash, then really a few BTC haters, you know, Nobody's going to hear them, you know. Um, so strategy. Strategy implies choices, right? So, you know, frequently um, I run into uh, people and I say, you know, we should work more on this rather than that. And then people are like, why not both? <laughs> you know, that's... Um, I, you know, I kind of understand where that comes from, but also it is absolutely infuriating because, like, the whole the whole concept of strategy is is why not both right not both we got to make a choice right because if we try to do everything then we really don't have a strategy right because remember strategy is about leveraging our strengths to overcome our weaknesses it's about making choices it's about um it's about it's about being able to say no to some things the, so that you can say yeah to other things right um it's about the uh, intelligent application of the resources we have because we certainly don't have unlimited resources and time is absolutely a factor right so it's not it's not really enough to inch forward on a billion things you know we're at when we could have made huge progress on a hundred things, you know, and we could have distinguished ourselves with those hundred things and we could have used that hundred things to get those billion things a lot more easier. That's strategy, you know, that's, uh, that's intelligent. Um, that's, co that's coordination, you know. So, yeah, so I, I find it uh, kind of fr like I would like people to think about strategy. You know, I mentioned strategy in the previous episode. You know, think about how we can leverage, uh, identify uh, strategies, uh, innovative strategies for onboarding lots of new people. I just can't emphasize enough the, the importance of strategy. And in order to have a stra to generate ideas for a strategy, you first have to understand what a strategy is. There's a really good book about this that, um, it's an ebook. Um, I don't know. You can ask me if you're interested, um, and I'll look it up. That really explains the basics of strategy really well. So another part of strategy is deciding, you know, what we want to work on, what's most important to work on, right? It's not enough to just say, oh, we have these ten things, so let's work on all ten things. You know, that's that's just that's too amorphous. You know. What's the one thing that could make the biggest difference to Bitcoin Cash right now? Onboarding lots of new people because that, you know, like people say, oh, well, we should have more protocol development teams, right? That's that's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not against that. But the fact that there are six protocol development teams actually, at the end of the day, what real de decentralization does it add? I'm not sure it adds any. I'm not really sure that it does. Uh, because at the end of the day, 100% uh, or close to 100% of blocks are being produced with uh, BCHN. But when we bring in new people, uh, each new person that we add is, is new transactions on the blockchain. 
It's new incent it's incentives that come into play for new people because new people are like, well, I gotta make sure the system keeps working because I, I really like this, I depend on it. Um, it's, you know, new people who say, uh, Bitcoin Cash node, meh, uh, Bitcoin Verde, yeah. And then maybe they become miners and they run Bitcoin Verde, right? Or maybe they push their favorite mining, maybe they join a pool and they point, they, they, they push their pool uh, to run Bitcoin Verde. Uh, they start businesses, right? We need a business ecosystem because we need to have decision making more spread out, not just the same old faces, right? So, in my opinion, the best thing that we can do strategically for Bitcoin Cash is onboard lots of new people. Um, and we need to educate those people too. And there are some good series like Cindy Wang is doing an interesting series. I haven't watched it yet, but it looks cool. Um, Naomi Rockwell is doing an educational series. Um, I'm a little behind on my educational series, but i um, trying to get some things straightened away so I can put myself 100% into that. I haven't found the, the freelancers that I need at the end of the day to really do that. So, um, yeah, so I, wanna, I want you thinking about strategy. And uh, there were some uh, miscellaneous comments I wanted to address. Um, so why does hash rate matter, right? Some people said oh, hash rate doesn't really matter. Nobody cares, bro. Hash rate matters because it represents the real security of the blockchain, right? Now we have a kind of uh, a secret security because even though uh, you know that the shot to in the shot 256 hash rate space, it might be 97% uh, on BTC, maybe 2% on BCH, right? But a lot of those same miners in the 97% are faithful BCH uh, supporters. Although now the Bitmain has changed hands, right? BTC.com has a new owner, right? These are question marks. And these should accelerate our, our desire to, to get more hash rate to flip uh, over to BCH um, because question marks are not good. Yeah, especially in the security department uh, in, on, in the blockchain space. Um, and why does price matter? Because price moves hash rate. Price gets us more hash rate. Um, and because price really is when you boil down like, you know, you. This guy over here says he's gonna reinvent prediction markets. This guy over here says he's gonna onboard a million users. But you know what? At the end of the day, all that's real pretty, but it boils down to the price. That's the indicator that people use and they compare it to other, other options when it comes to uh, buying or using or being a fan of or whatever. Price absolutely matters. Now, the question is how do we move price, right? I'll probably talk about that in a future episode. Um, Came across a comment, we want to decouple from the BTC ecosystem as solidly as possible. I don't know why we would want to do that, really. Uh, we have to co-opt the BTC ecosystem because there's a huge amount of liquidity and apps and whatnot that, um, that we need. We will benefit from that. Uh, we, one of the most important factors for adoption is liquidity because when people are choosing what to hold, they're also choosing what they think they can get out of real quick if they need to in a pinch, you know. Um, and, you know, things like Phoenix Wallet or Cash App, um, you know, just as we've benefited from being a part of um, uh, Grayscale, PayPal, Venmo, we would benefit from being a part of the the apps uh, of the the offerings on you know things like Phoenix Wallet and Cash App. Uh, we, we need to woo those people, you know. Yeah, sometimes we have to take a hard line and give them a little slap across the face, like you know, wake up from your BTC trance, man. This thing's not working out. Um, but we we need to we need to co-opt. We don't we don't want to decouple. We need to co-opt. Because also, given the small size of BCH, um, we, you know, like, for example, just one example, Binance P2P, this, is, this has become overnight a top um, uh, P2P uh, exchange across the world. Um, you know, 
I, I don't know what the numbers are of that versus local cryptos. I would say they're the number two. But right now, all liquidity on there th uh, for BCH comes through other coins like USDT and, B and BTC. And yeah, it like breaks my heart. You know, we got to rely on USDT, really. We got to rely on BTC. I'm talking to Binance uh, to see if, you know, what we can do to get them to add BCH. And if somebody from Binance is listening, I'm onboarding lots of new people in the developing world. I have funds to spend. We can market together and together we can both grow. Yeah. Um, but the fact is we still depend on BTC liquidity. Uh, so we can't, I don't see how we can talk about decoupling. Uh, another comment, you know, it's always fun to pick out the most extreme uh, comments. You know, they, they, it's, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, I guess. But uh, and that's not my intention. I don't, I don't want to have one extreme responding to another extreme. There was a lot of that last year. Uh, the ABC team uh, thrived on picking out the most extreme comments from the most extreme people who usually, are, frankly, are not that relevant to decision making. Uh, and using that as their justification for, for, for forking off. We, we have to get away from that kind of thing. We have to find the middle grounds like business people. Right. But anyway, I'm going to this one's not super crazy, but he said this person says we don't need anything more than marketing. Look at Doge and you will see what I mean. Yeah, that, that's that's interesting. So uh, that's that's a really interesting comment. Um, see, there's different marketing, right? There's different marketing. There's marketing to people inside the crypto space who are entering the crypto space. Doge is killing that, right? Uh, but then there's marketing to mainstream people and marketing utility to them, right? So there's marketing narrative to people inside the crypto space, buzzwords, and then there's marketing real utility to people outside. Um, I think we should be focused on marketing to people in the mainstream outside, right? Uh, Doge is, is cute, but like, I don't, that's, that's, that's not substantive. That's all hype. Replicating that for Bitcoin Cash is is like we could spend years uh, wooing a few influencers to do something, you know, do some copycat thing that's like one tenth as as effective. And for what? When we could be out here building companies, um, uh, recruiting entrepreneurs, onboarding business people, building apps where people don't even necessarily have to know. I mean, they probably should, but they don't necessarily have to know. Like it doesn't, that they're using BCH, you know, it doesn't have to have BCH pla plastered everywhere. Uh, but we need that business ecosystem because that also is a counterbalance to the whole phenomena of, uh, uh, phenomenon of devs with power, which is what, you know, Javier Gonzalez of the Bitcoin mining parliament, I think has accurately noted is what leads to all these, uh, these forks, which is, which leads essentially to unadoption. <laughs> so I think probably in the next episode, I'll talk more about, uh, marketing and I'm going to leave that here. Thanks so much for watching.